and uh, time for us to do our very first proper, was our second, but our first proper one, power rankings. A pr predictive rankings, they want to call these. Predictive power rankings. This yeah. is what the power rankings are going to be at the end, the, the Tuesday after the All-Ireland Football Final. If you are in a time machine right now, you may as well just go back to the end of the year. Go, go to September because we can tell you what's happening. So with these images, are we going eight to one? Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. So number eight for me, Monaghan. I think uh, Fanti's doing a great job so mm -hmm. far. I think that they're on the easy side of the Ulster Championship draw, mm -hmm. so they're definitely going to make the Super 8s. I may, I may have them too low. They, I, I, will, I would like to revisit this at the end of the league and maybe we'll do this again. Number eight, Monaghan. Number seven, Tyrone. I wavered about this, I wasn't sure. I think that actually Tyrone, there's a, there's a chance Tyrone have a, a down year this year. The things go pear-shaped in mm -hmm. what's probably going to be Mickey Hart's final season. This is predicated on the belief that Colin McShane will not play a single minute yeah. of championship football this year. Yeah. So they're going to go seven. I might have them too high. Number six, a shock. Cork. Oh, I forgot about Cork. Cork are in the... Uh, in I the actually Super forgot Rates. about Cork. <laughs> Cork are going to come rampaging through with the, the, the success of a season behind them. Mm. Finally, they're a team who understands what it's like to win again. Yeah. And Kerry, Kerry won't pay them any heed in Munster, uh, which doesn't matter, they'll still win. But as a result, Cork will get close to them and they will catapult themselves into the Super 8s. Mm. You know, they know what they're doing. They're, they're a free-flowing football, self-belief. They've got the success of those underage teams over the last number of years coming through. Uh, a try reborn. Are you changing yours? No, I'm just noting what you said about Cork. We'll come back to it. Uh, number five... Mayo, heartbreak, it's over. They're no longer one of the top four teams in the country. So where, where are they, number five? Number five. And, uh, you know, it's just that, um, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, that's fair enough. Fooled me once, shame on me. I think we're going to have the same top four here, Ger. Uh, I think we're going to have the same top five, to be quite honest with you. Number four is Galway. I've got Galway number four. Who have you got number three? Number three is Donegal. Yeah, you've got these. Well, okay. Yeah, our, our top five is exactly the same, basically, except for I presume one and two. Number two is Dublin. Mm. I believe that this is Kerry's year. That they're gonna they're gonna come up and smash one, and this is the uh, this is the proper establishment of a rivalry that makes sense. And number one is Kerry. King Clifford. I just don't see how you can make this leap right now that Kerry will be all Ireland champions. No one. Because it was Dublin, a drawn game. All they had to do was push up. All they had to do was look up and see. Oh, hang on, Cluxon's not on his line. What? Where is? Oh, he's pushed up. They need to beat Dublin in Croke Park. They, they can will. draw with them all just they want. Just once. Just once. But we, we all know how good Dublin are in situational football. I suspect they're going to draw with them in the Super 8 game and beat them. I think they could go unbeaten in the two games. But a draw year. would be a good result for both in the Super 8s. So uh, maybe they could just come to an agreement. Well, as of course, Dublin would probably never agree to anybody for a job, but Kerry people would definitely take that. And my power rankings at number eight, we've got Armagh. I did this, thought about this last week before Leash beat them, to be quite honest with you. We've got young Turbot in, who could become the breakout star of uh, or 2020, I suspect. Number seven, Monaghan. Banty's back, and I think Monaghan are going to go a bit better than they did last year when they had a disappointing backdoor exit. Number six, Throne. Colin McShane again, based on the fact that he might not be around here. Number five is Mayo, same as Ger. Number four is Donegal, or Galway, Galway. Number four is Galway, same as Ger. Number three is Donegal, same as Ger. But number two is Kerry, because they're the second best team in the country. And number one is Dublin, because they're the best team in the country. And you think, Dublin, that. Uh, you think that Kerry can't close that gap, which was almost, which was infinitesimal. Some people would say it's a six point gap. Because of the replay? Yeah. Uh, like, but Kerry actually played badly in the replay and still. And gave away a bizarre goal. And still we're in the game, like, playing badly. Yeah, like, I, I would always maintain that Dublin beating somebody by six points is not necessarily a six-point gulf between counties, but I still think that there is probably a two, three-point gulf between the teams. And Ordinarily, I th with everybody else, Dublin beat by six points, I would say there is at least a six-point gap. And I, I really think, and I've mentioned it before, the whole idea of winning one without Jim Gavin is important to these Dublin players, doing have it you, without Jim. Have you watched back the two games? I've not watched the replay. I've watched the drawn game back. Right. I've just, I've watched, just, just watched right. you weren't you weren't here for the no and I did to be fair I missed my, I missed the first 15 minutes of the replay I'm not going to lie but I heard that they kept kicking the ball into Paul Ganey long and Kieran Kilkenny scored four points basically that's all I missed and I'm not I'm not going to do this to myself I'll watch it back you should watch it back like, like, like just 
the type of thing that like here I've got enough in my plate. I've got to watch Shakira and J Lo today. I don't have time to be watching That's replay. Fifteen minutes and and I could really don't have time to be going back I'm over past you, I, wars and I, we. I absolutely think that like uh, they're far closer to this than than you think. And also like that. So the first crop of young players to come through from the great underage teams has arrived. The, the second crop and the third crop won't come through for another period of time. So like there's like an infusion of fresh blood coming through that's just being mm. layered on the level of excellence that we've seen from the team over the last 12 months. Are you talking about Dublin or Kerry here? I'm talking about Kerry. But well, Dublin have the exact same thing going they on. They don't, they don't They really. really do. I'm not sure they do. Like, like what, what is the infusion of excellence that you need? Is it so... Brian Howard's twenty third birthday is coming up. No, soon. but he's already a sensation. He, he, exactly. They, they don't. They, they have. They're not, they have... not going to have any more. Brian, they're not. There's not like a conveyor belt of Brian Howard's coming through. Like uh, so, uh, like if so there's one player who might actually have a conveyor belt of cloned beings like him coming through, it might be someone like Brian Howard. Now Scully as well. What they won't have coming through is your next Dean Rock, or like a, a gifted free take, or your your the next Brogan or Mannion, but like Archer Rock, so sweet, isn't he? He, well, yeah, I forgot about Kieran Archer. He's, like he can. He, they have Kieran Archer on ice for the seven in a row or the eight in a row, whatever it becomes. Just to go back to one of your other things, Cork. Not for me, top eight this year. I'm all for talking up Cork, and I think they're an excellent side. I think I would have them maybe nine, maybe ten, maybe eleven. I just think Division Three is going to hurt them later in the year. I think the fact that they play Kerry in a Munster semi-final is going to hurt them this year. Getting to a Munster final last year was the reason why. I predicted that they would get to the Super 8s is because that extra Andy. couple of rounds of qualifiers is key. So you get one good draw. And I, just, I don't think it's just a draw. I think they can beat most teams in the back door. Uh, I just think that... Uh, the back door is much harder this year because it's only good teams. Exactly. And there's that, there's that in it as well. But there's also a possibility that Cork might not be in the top tier. Like, I know they will. They will surely win every game in Division 3. But we're still talking about a team on the periphery. And I just think playing that quality of game in the spring, it's not going to set you up enough to beat Kerry. I and I don't think that'll be, that, I, that will I, not set you enough then to be a top so I don't, team. I don't, I, you're right. I don't think they're going to be Kerry. Uh, but, like, I, I don't think there's that much difference between beating the teams in Division 3 and beating the teams in Division 2. Possibly. Like, so... so they're well, very similar. Uh, no, sorry, actually, I, no, I disagree with that. I, I think that if you top Division 3, I think you're more than capable of actually giving the top of Division 2 a bit of a tilt. But I, I do think that playing Division 3 teams consistently, like playing your Leitrims and your Derrys, is different to playing your Kildares. It is different to playing your Cavins. Maybe the Cavins are last year, but another bit weaker this year. Like, even, even a county like Leash would be... Uh, and our mad like they're they're quality sides that would actually put down a, a good foundation for the summer. And I know everybody in Division Three is desperate and thirsty to get out of that division. I just I just can't see a Division Three team getting to the top eight in Ireland this year, and they will not be considered a top eight team. For me, it's our mad, and like I could not believe this result at the weekend. I couldn't either. It, this so is uh, like hopefully we'll, we'll speak to Mike Quirk soon in the next couple of weeks, and perhaps Leash could be the dark horse of somebody who gets into that top eight because beating this Armagh team by six points was quite something. I rated them very highly last year. We'll have to meet Pierre Rowe onto us, sure. Like me, they're nowhere in this eight. The, the only Division One team I think not in this eight for either of us. Well, you know, get a goalkeeper, lads. 11 goalkeepers in the last 18 months, That's is it? quite the statistic that Anthony Miles had yesterday. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, and they are the eternal social media wingers when it comes to these power rankings. Uh, Tyrone, I, I mean, you have them at six, I have them at seven. That's like a mediocre campaign in the Super 8s. Colin McShane is in, where do they go for you? I think they leapfrog Mayo if Colin McShane is back in. But I don't think they're better than Galway or Donegal, even with Colin McShane. I think they're taking a step back this year. Yeah, it feels that way, doesn't it? It feels like the it's, we had um, a bit of chat about this at uh, Enver McGinley on Friday, just a couple of minutes at the end of our preview of the weekend stuff. And he was like, look, Tyrone seems to have reverted to type. They've come back to a, a running game now. They, they've tried to find a replacement for McShane because they know they're going to have to. It didn't work out very early on in the mm. first game. Um, and obviously it's not going to, but Matty Donnelly's injury is a very serious injury. He's not going to be back for the league either. And like that's your two best attacking options. And like I don't know, I just don't feel like there's any sign of, of significant progress from them yet. Could be all wrong. They can go on a run, but they, they seem where's to be, it coming from? They seem to be the only team left playing puke football at this point. Can go away. Can go away upset the top two? Yes. Can they, can they, can they, upset, they can upset Kerry. I don't think... I, I think you can forget about Donegal, Galway, Mayo, and obviously all the rest in terms of beating Dublin. I think that... The, and, like, this is, not, this is not me saying that Kerry don't have a chance of beating Dublin or don't have a chance of you being right. I just think in terms of beatability, 
Kerry are much more beatable than Dublin are. They may be better going forward. Kerry will have Dublin, Dublin. Kerry will have Dublin in the Super Eights. Yeah. Where? Uh, ooh, good question. So, what's the Croke Park round? So last. Is Dublin only getting one game of Croke Park this year. You, you put me on the spot there. It's not going to be the first round anyway, is it? Because that was the process for the first year that the provincial uh, winners would play. Yeah, and that, was, that didn't work out. So uh, Probably the third round. It could be the second round because what's going to happen this year is that if the winners, the winners play each other in the second round. Oh, yeah. So if Kerry and Dublin win their first games and they'll have home advantage because you would imagine they'll both be provincial champions, they will both win those games. And then you will have um, Kerry versus Dublin in a neutral venue. Thurless. In neutral? Croke Park. Would it be neutral? Yeah. Right. Thurless would be amazing. Thurless, bring that. Let, let's get this campaign started now. Memories of 2001, Thurless. And if it's a replay, back to Thurless. Yeah. But there would be no replay. Super 8. Good point. <laughs>